I'm gonna start off my morning actually going on a walk. I never bring you with me just because like this camera's actually really heavy. I'm gonna eventually buy a vlog one. But I said I don't vlog today because it's been a while and maybe you wanna see my summer day thing, whatever. And whatever is happening. So, and I'm also gonna have a pros versus cons being a special ed teacher in this video as well. And at this point, I have 3,954 watch hours. So who knows, I might have made it by Friday. This might be the video, the last video before I actually make that goal. And I'm so, 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 so excited. So, whoa, okay. Um, um, okay, uh, what am I doing? Ooh, it's been a wild day. It's literally just that even 11 a.m. Okay, let's go on the walk. I'm gonna show you my overnight notes. I'm so excited for my overnight notes. Um, overnight notes. Okay, let's just go and do that. If you haven't checked out yet, just give me a few more minutes. And when I'm back, why am I like, I'm like abusing myself. I'm like, when I'm back. Okay, um, I'll be back. Hey y'all, I'm back from my walk. I'm now more relaxed, put together. What I was beginning to tell you was today's my day to take a break with the Chloe Ting workout. So excited for that, but I'm gonna be doing now the talk. That is the reason why, or the title. So what I assume is the reason why most of you stop by this video and I'm also very sweaty now. So I'm like rethinking my life decisions. I, as many of you know, I'm taking some classes in English. I'm working towards my English certification and I got a question asking me why I first went into special ed, why I'm going for my English certification now, and I figure I could answer that question and then also just go through the pros and cons of special education, especially if you are someone considering that path, because honestly, I don't know if I would have even known at the time to look up videos on YouTube, but I know for sure now that I constantly look up videos online for advice and input from other people. So I'm gonna very honestly give you my thoughts and my opinions and explain to you why I'm making the decision that I am making. I do plan to stay in the exact same environment that I've been in for the past four years full time for what looks like two years. I was approved for a Fun for Teachers fellowship with two of my co-teachers and part of receiving the fellowship, you have to be at the school that you're at for the next school year. So in my case, I would have gone on that fellowship to South Africa actually this summer, which would have been cool, but because of COVID, it has moved to next year. And I want to, I really want that commitment. I want to honor that commitment. And I really want to take advantage of it, especially with my co-teachers. So I am going to be staying for two years. And to be honest, I've learned so much through co-teaching and through the environment that I'm in that I'm perfectly fine with that and I used to be the type of personality that would just like rush and want to do things as quickly as possible and even though I think I will actually finish all my requirements for my English certification in a year, I think it's wiser to take my time and like really think things through and even see like what setting I want to be in. And being fully transparent, I love, I love special education, I love teaching special ed, I just really want my own classroom and that's essentially why I'm doing this. I guess it's because of my personality type and I know ironically enough there's many people who teach English who go to special ed because the workload is less and it depends on how you look at it. In all honesty, I'll go through the pros and cons in a second, but I really wanted the autonomy of having my own classroom and Actually, at the school that I'm at, there was a special ed teacher who's now an admin, and she taught on her own within, without an English license. So my, at the time when I first started, I always knew I wanted that. I always knew I wanted my own classroom. And my AP, my assistant principal, actually told me he wouldn't recommend going through all those classes and whatever because I could still teach like that without that license. So you're allowed to teach two periods out of your content. But I kind of realized that I might not ever get that chance if I'm within this license, but if I'm able to go to English, then I definitely would have that chance. And I might even have more autonomy where, let's say I get hired half and half, I would be fine with that. I Actually, that would be kind of ideal in some ways because I already know the special ed role and I know that teaching English on your own is a completely different beast. So that is another option as well. But those are my thoughts and I'm gonna, be going into the pros and cons. To be honest, when I first entered special ed, I just knew I could do it. I I was the high schooler. We had a really great special ed program from the district I grew up in, and I would spend my lunch periods, but not every lunch period, but freshman year, for a long time, I spent like many, many lunch periods just going to the special ed kids and reading with them during lunch. I don't know like, <laughs> like why I did that. I just, 
I, I did, you know, and I actually was part of drama club and I brought one of my friends there and we would go and we would, you know, read to special ed kids and it was just something I did. And yeah, I always knew that I had the capacity to work with that population and when I was rethinking my life and I realized, you know, I didn't want to be in business and I wanted to be in teaching and I saw special ed was a direct route, I knew that I had the skills and the capacity to work with that population and I thought, let's do it. But I had no idea about co-teaching. I had no idea about what it would really look like. I think I imagined I'd be in D75. And D75 is for students with severe disabilities. And I realize now that that is not my ideal population. That's very hard to work with. And you actually do need your content license and your D70, your special ed license to work with that population. So right now what I'm doing is just kind of better equipping me if I ever did decide to work with that population. But for that population, you're working more life skills and different things like that. So it's a completely different experience than what I currently teach and what I do. So I think my decision will be better explained also by going through the pros and cons because special ed does have a lot of pros and cons. And honestly, it really depends on who you are, whether or not you're gonna wanna do this. And in the city, special education notoriously has a huge dropout rate. There are a lot of teachers who are unsatisfied with this career. And I think I know why. And I actually have a very good situation in the school that I'm in. I have co-teachers I've worked with for a long time. And I've even talked with other special ed teachers and we've openly said to each other that we don't see ourselves going to a different school because the options for special ed teachers, especially co-teaching, can be very hard and you could be treated very poorly. And at our school, there's a lot of advocating for us. There's a lot of like, you know, um, this desire for parity within the classroom and not equal voices. We've actually moved away from that, but it used to be 50-50 special ed content teacher. But that all kind of makes, I think that's part of the reason why I was able to stay as long as I did. Although to be honest, I just kind of have that personality type where I'm gonna stick it out. Like, you know, I have my long-term goals and as long as I know that I'm doing what I wanna do long-term, I'm fine with like going through like the <laughs> learning experience. And to be honest, special ed has been such a learning experience, but let's go into the pros and cons. Okay, um, first pro is co-teaching slash sharing a class, and that is actually a con as well. So because you are co-teaching, first as a first year teacher, I think I was exposed to just like excellent teaching. I worked with so many different co-teachers. I think I've worked with eight different co-teachers because I had five teachers during my residency and then four my first year teaching and then I've been working with the same two for a couple years now in the English content area. And I was exposed to classrooms that had already been set up for like a couple of years and teachers, I just happened to be paired with a lot of master teachers and that's like the, to the, 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 um, the way they phrase it, like master teacher, you know, like teachers who other teachers would go and visit. And I think that even just like that exposure to people who know what they're doing, they're passionate about it, they have everything laid out, that was a really good experience. It was a really great learning experience. And I also, through this, learn to advocate for myself. So I would say, you know, like, let's divide up the grading, or let's do this, or can I speak during this part? Can I do whatever? And I was never that person. It always made me very uncomfortable. My co-teacher for English 10 is actually a Malayali woman, and I'm Malayali, and it's like kind of funny because like, what are the chances the two Malayali women would be, would be paired together? But she even pointed out to me like, you know, in Indian culture, women are told to like, be quiet. So like, of course it's hard to speak up, but, even through that relationship and all my co-teaching relationships, I've learned to like speak up and share what I feel. And that's another thing too about co-teaching. If you like your co-teachers, it's like you have a buddy with you like all day. Like me and my co-teachers are like cracking jokes all day. And it's just, it's really nice. So that companionship, that friendship is great. Although I will say online, I don't have that anymore. Um, I would say like, even like if my co-teacher happens to be watching this, like unintentionally she become she became like, you know, they, they've become like the, the closest people in your life in some ways, you know? Um, so that's definitely something that is a big pro, like that relationship, but it could totally go the other hand. Like, and I acknowledge I'm younger than my co-teachers and they will likely retire earlier than me. So even if I like, you know, was like, I'm staying in here, we're working together and like I get used to working with them for like 20 years, you know, and then they retire, and then I'm on my own. I gotta figure something out. And I don't wanna do that. You know, I don't wanna, special ed teachers normally, traditionally, 
have to adapt to the content teacher. And I don't know if I want to do that when I'm like 40, you know, if I'm still teaching at 40, we'll see. I've considered like, I actually think, I used to think I want to be an admin, but now I think I want to go for a PhD. And if you ever ask someone who has a PhD if you should go for it, they always dissuade you. And I know this because I've gone to like open houses a million times and they're always like, no, don't do it. Okay, um, so that's the pro, that's a con. Pro, con, okay, con, pro is paperwork. So some people hate the paperwork. I've actually always loved paperwork. I love writing. I love, you know, like you have these things called IEPs. These are individual education plans and you go in and you learn all these details about a student, like who they are and their interests and everything like that. And I've always loved that. I think that it gives me a chance to like see the student out of like 30 kids in that class. I know that kid so well. I get to like talk with them, talk with their parents. So I see that as a major pro. Next is significance of work. As time has gone on, I've, especially working with the population I work with, it's a lot of students who are learning disabled, so they have average intelligence, and they just learn differently. And I've been able to see success in some of those students who like aren't able to write anything, you know, like like say they're they really struggle with verbal skills, and I'll see them be able to write a paragraph, and it feels so gratifying to know that me giving them a sentence starter, me talking through it with them, me helping them out, like that was a reason why they were able to achieve and do something they couldn't do before, and that's just extremely gratifying, and I think that in a traditional setting when you have like 30 kids and you don't have a co-teacher, one of you can't go out and just like work small group or work one-on-one -on -one with that one student who needs that help. So that's definitely a big perk and that goes along with workload. And I teach self-contained. I literally have, over the years, I've had one to two students in that class. I do also teach ICT, that is an inter-collaborative environment and that's for majority of my classes. And for ICT, I like the workload will, I mean, now I'm so used to co-teaching, like I normally split the work, like we split the grading, but the content teacher normally does take a little bit more home from time to time. And that's something to keep in mind, like with grading and stuff. And I would, when my content teacher would normally have another class, maybe that they teach on their own, I have my self-contained, which is two students. So with those two students, it's really not a crazy amount of grading, which is honestly really nice. Okay, um, now I'm gonna go into the cons because obviously it's not all fine and dandy. Um, so first it is co-teaching and sharing a classroom. Like I mentioned earlier, you are adapting a lot of times, you are adjusting. I kind of feel like I've talked to somebody, like I've talked to special ed teachers about this, it sometimes feels like the civil rights movement, like special ed teachers fight for like equal rights or even like respect from not only students, but they also kind of fight for respect sometimes from your administration. And this is something we've said openly with our, our school and I love that my school is so receptive to hearing that and acknowledging ways that they could do better because a lot of times when they are like patting classes on the back or like saying things are well, they point out the general ed education teacher and even like test scores and things, it's just easier to attribute to the general education teacher. So the special ed teacher never really gets that recognition. And I think we all long for recognition and that feeling of praise in our job. So just the way that this whole system is built up is very flawed. And I will say also that I've been teaching now for four years. I've, you know, full time, I've been in teaching for five years my residency. And this last spring, a student asked me if I would be a, an assistant to another teacher next year. And it did sting a lot because I, you know, I have my master's degree. I work very hard. I like try to help create lessons that are important. I add in things here and there. I change things. I create adaptations. And then for students to still think I'm a teaching assistant is really, really, really hard to swallow. And you can stress from the beginning of the year, like, there are two teachers in this classroom. We both are teachers, blah, blah, blah. And it's just like, it gets lost in translation, you know, and it does hurt because like you are doing the work, you are certified as a teacher, but you're still not seen like that. And I think that it's not something just unique to me. I remember I had a resident, not a resident, he was a special ed teacher at the school that I did my residency at, and a student asked him that too, like years into teaching. And he eventually ended up leaving special ed and going into a different career. 
And I think that that lack of acknowledgement and being seen as what you are essentially, like fighting to be like, I'm a teacher, like I'm literally a teacher, <laughs> like it can be really tiring. And yeah, that's one big thing, the lack of respect. Okay, next is paperwork. So uh, especially if, like I'm somebody who like I will advocate and say like I want a grade, blah blah blah. So then you have grading, you also have IEPs, and your IEPs are just on top of everything else. So as gratifying it is to learn about the students, it can be kind of like, man, like I'm doing so much work. So it's like not the best all the time. <laughs> My camera literally shut off. Like it, the card was full. So I don't know how much of that you got, but the last point is control, and I. There's a special ed teacher at my school, an English teacher at my school who used to teach special ed, and she said, like, like she was really transparent about it. Like, I asked for her advice as somebody who transitioned from special ed to English, and she was like straight up with me. Like, her husband still teaches special ed, and she was saying, like, yeah, the workload is more, but she's always been someone who likes to call the shots. She likes to be in control. She's fine with extra work, and she acknowledges, like, it's so much extra work. But her personality type, like. She likes being the one who's like making those decisions, who's like kind of like, you know, whatever. And of course, like in co-teaching, it should be like an equal footing, but it's just not, like it's just the nature of it. And you can make steps to advocate and change the dynamic, but it still will always kind of like teeter towards the content teacher being more in control. And that's just the nature of the beast. Like I, I wish I could say like, that's not how it is. It's like you could, and yeah, like over years, I've worked with my co-teacher for some time. So both of them, so like I am able to advocate and change things here and there. But like, if I were to say like, let's overhaul everything, I'm gonna be doing this, my teaching styles, blah, blah, blah. It would just not fare well because like, that's just not gonna work. But if I have my own classroom and I wanna start things from scratch and like have a completely different setup and a completely different whatever, I have that autonomy. So. Those are the pros and cons of teaching special ed. I hope that it sheds some light on what it's like. I think we desperately do need good special ed teachers, but I think ultimately the system needs to be changed. Like point blank, that needs to be changed. And maybe one day, like I would love to be part of like being a part of that change because I think that classes could be made and changed for the better if we could really figure out a better system for this. But I do think that the way special ed works right now is really flawed and ICT was a better step to helping students with special needs, but if you're having such a high special education teacher dropout rate, that's also a big issue. So, okay, I'm gonna eat breakfast now. Over here is the breakfast. We got overnight oats and some fruit on top. Now I'm gonna do some coursework. We're reading Frankenstein, so fun, fun, fun. Here's the setup, y'all. We have this baking pan I gotta wash. I did this like boiling method. I'm copying this from Natasha Ocean. And here are the pretzels, a brew in, ooh, my lens. And I'm also watching the bowl type. Now I'm gonna make the cinnamon. Yeah, so butter, sugar, cinnamon, let's do it. Here we are, these are the pretzels. I have some caramel over here. And the mixture, which I actually messed up. It's supposed to be butter separate and then that separate, so. We'll see. Here are the glorious pretzels. Yes, I did mess up the stuff, but it's fine. And I have the caramel, and I'm just gonna taste a little bit. My cousin Abby's coming a little later. We're gonna watch Onwards and eat this, and it'll be great. Say hi, Abby. <laughs> She's checking herself out. I got myself another point. We're watching Onward. You wanna say anything, Abby? I hope this movie doesn't make you cry. <laughs> no problem. So now it is 5.40. I'm going to be ending off the vlog. These tend to be super long anyway. I am actually going back and doing an assignment for one of the classes I'm taking. The professor didn't post it in the morning and no one has posted the assignment yet, but I'm gonna go back and try to understand it. It's actually kind of confusing. <sighs> it's like learning narrative and like how it works and like the authors, how they're telling the story. We're reading Frankenstein and it's like very confusing. So I'm gonna spend some time doing that doing Bible study, so on. Like that's pretty much the rest of my day. But thank you for following along with me with my random snippets. I hope you guys still like it. And let me know what you like seeing in vlogs, what you like included or whatever. And I'll make sure to include that in the vlogs because I'm still learning myself how to make this more interesting and interactive. And I would have showed you more of the cooking, but honestly, it's so messy like and hard enough to cook like without filming it. So I don't a camera and I'm just very flustered. But if you want to see the process, then I will figure it away. I will make it happen. But yeah, okay, bye.